In the city car segment, there's nothing quite like a Smart 4.4. That might sound a strange thing to say, given that this car borrows so much, both from the brand's smaller 4.2 model and from its Renault Twingo design stablemate. These ingredients, though, have been put together with care and flair to create quite an aspirational premium choice in this class. There's a price to pay for this, of course, but it's not exorbitant, and the issues of practicality, efficiency and connectivity have all been very cleverly thought through. In short, if you're shopping in this segment, you'd probably like one. Like the idea of Smart's fashionable little 4-2, but need more than two seats? Then you'll like this, the brand's five-door 4-4. Still concentrated smart, still clever, still small, but just that little bit more usable. What do you do when your brand is completely defined by one single car? Broaden it with a whole range of completely different products? Well, that tends not to work, as Smart found out when it launched the original version of this 4.4 model back in 2004. This uh, Mitsubishi Colt in a Smart body kit wasn't actually very smart at all. No rear engine layout, no super tight turning circle, it wasn't even particularly small. In short, what was served up back then delivered a conspicuous lack of the things that should define this clever, fashionable urban brand. Time for a four-seater smart model that does. This car is what its predecessor should have been, a 4.2 with two extra seats. So yes, the engine's in the back. It'll turn on a sixpence like a London taxi cab, and you can fit it into spaces you'd regretfully pass by at the wheel of an ordinary super mini. That's partly because, unlike its predecessor, it isn't an ordinary super mini. This time round, sized instead to compete against smaller city cars like Hyundai's i10, Fiat's Panda and the various permutations of Peugeot's 108 and the Volkswagen Up. It's a tough sales environment, hence the importance of that uniquely space-efficient rear engine layout, a setup that virtually every other manufacturer has considered and then rejected for use in this segment. With this in mind, and having already burnt its fingers by getting the first generation version of this car wrong, it was perhaps not surprising that smart owner Daimler sought to hedge its financial bets by developing this design in partnership with another brand, Renault the Chosen One. Hence the reason why this model shares almost everything with the third generation version of the French maker's Twingo City car, except perhaps a uniquely smart orientated sense of style and joie de vivre. That's important. This car needed a brand identity and appeal to heart as well as head. But will that be enough to make you want one? Time to find out. In this day and age, it surely shouldn't be considered unusual to jump into a small town tailored car and find the engine mounted in the back. After all, for more than half a century, Volkswagen's original Beetle proved the point of this layout with the better packaging you could have and the way that smells and fumes flowed away behind you rather than directly into your face. Indeed, back in the 60s and early 70s, this layout was de rigueur amongst small cars with models like the Hillman Imp, the Skoda 110 and the original Fiat 500, all selling in large numbers with their oily bits slung out at the rear. Since then though, this configuration has been largely abandoned, except by Smart, whose tiny 4.2 model has used it since 1998. Even Smart, though, found it hard to reconcile this concept into a car with five doors. And when the time came for the brand to first produce such a thing back in 2004, with the launch of the original 4.4 model, it reverted to the front-engine, front-wheel drive norm. The resulting car was pleasant enough, but it didn't really feel like a proper Smart, and the designers knew that next time round they'd need to do the job properly. With this second generation 4.4, with just a little bit of help from Renault, they've done exactly that. 
This car comes to us as part of a joint development that's also bought us the third generation Renault Twingo. And as with that model, the engineering slick enough to disguise the unusual configuration. Take a drive in this 4.4 and if you didn't already know that the engine was in the back, you'd be unlikely to guess the fact, which is probably about as big a compliment as I could pay smart regarding this 4.4's handling neutrality. Essentially, though the driving position is a little more commanding than most, in every other respect, on first acquaintance at least, this feels just like any other modestly powered city runabout. Or at least it does until you come to tightly twirl the wheel. In this car, the front wheels can turn to an impressive 45 degree angle. More typically, urban runabouts are limited to about 30 degrees. As a result, this car offers a super tight turning circle of just 8.65 meters. That's pretty much on a par with a London taxi cab. And assuming you discount the Twingo, over a meter tighter than any other rival can offer enough to make the difference between completing a successful U-turn or being caught in the traffic having to hurry a three-pointer. In terms of urban usability, it certainly gives this car a huge advantage. Slightly less endearing on city streets is the rather firm ride quality, which makes you wonder whether the rear engine layout has forced Smart into some compromises with damping. The short wheelbase certainly wouldn't have helped here either. Still, Large obstacles like speed humps don't upset the car too much, and the faster you go, the better the suspension copes. Not that you will be going that fast in a mainstream 4.4. Here I'm using the engine most buyers will opt for, the 71 brake horsepower 1 litre petrol unit. Three cylinders in size, as is common in this segment, but offering a mere 91 newton metres of pulling power, which explains the distinctly leisurely performance. Smart quotes a 16.9 second 0 to 62 mile an hour sprint figure en route to 94 miles an hour, nearly two and a half seconds slower than the supposedly identical one litre unit you'll find in a comparable Twingo, which is a bit disappointing. Maybe this is down to the longer gearing you get from a long throw Renault gear lever that you might first think feels strangely old hat in such a modern vehicle. Before you then remember that it has to marshal a linkage going right to the back of the car, so it can be forgiven if it doesn't have a switch-like action. If you really can't face going quite that slowly and feel prepared to pay a little more for your 4.4, then your smart salesperson will quickly direct you towards the other mainstream engine on offer, the more modern 90 brake horsepower unit the brand has borrowed from Renault. It too is a three cylinder similarly sized petrol power plant, but here the addition of turbocharging makes quite a difference, upping pulling power by nearly 50% to a heady 135 newton meters and improving the 0 to 62 mile an hour time to a more acceptable and probably more achievable 11.2 seconds. It's not often that extra power can be seen as a safety benefit, but here I wonder whether it might be. You'll certainly be glad of something a bit extra under your right foot when affecting an overtake or pulling into a stream of faster traffic in the outside lane. The turbo engine's a willing one then and capable of much more power with a bit of tuning work. Ask your dealer about the Brabus version of this car if that appeals. True, the standard 0.9 litre turbo model's academic maximum speed of 103 miles an hour isn't much different to that of the lesser variant I'm driving here. And the turbo delivery is somewhat idiosyncratic, blowing hot and cold as the boost cuts in and cuts out. Master that though and you'll get impressively peppy in-gear acceleration. The Turbo 4.4 is over three and a half seconds quicker than, say, a comparable 75 brake horsepower Volkswagen Up when it comes to the important 30 to 70 mile an hour overtaking increment. That could make all the difference between overtaking that swaying Arctic up front and wobbling about in the backwash from it. Talking of backwash, cruising at higher speeds in windy weather can be undertaken with a little more peace of mind than you might expect a little city car to be able to offer, thanks to standard crosswind assist technology that imperceptibly dabs the brakes to stabilise the car in blustery conditions. You can certainly handle the odd motorway journey in this model without a second thought. 
take on such a trip and you'll find that at higher speeds there's a little more wind noise around the A pillars and the mirrors than would be ideal, though it's possible you simply notice that more because there are no engine sounds coming from the front. Come off the highway and get yourself onto twistier roads and you'll find that the light steering that you probably liked so much when you were driving in town now lacks a bit of feel, but then that's a compromise most likely buyers will probably be happy to make. At least the helm features a variable ratio setup that responds more quickly as you turn the wheel and requires less arm twirling through tighter vents. A smart needs to look like one, as this 4.4 does. So there's the familiar distinctive outline of the Tridian safety cell as part of the usual fashionable two-tone paint finish, and a design that's pretty much identical to that of the brand's smaller 4.2 model from the A-pillars forward. Basing this car on Smart's tiniest offering means that this second generation 4.4 must be a size smaller than it was in Mark 1 model guise city car rather than super mini shaped. In fact, it's very small indeed, the mere 350 centimetre length, making this five door design actually more compact than three door city cars like Fiat's 500 and Ford's KA. Indeed, it's only 80 centimetres longer than the minuscule 4.2. To facilitate this, the bonnet's tiny, helping with a turning circle that's tighter than that of a taxi. Such are the benefits of Smart's decision to put the engine in the rear. Being rear engine defines this 3.5 metre long car in other ways too. With no oily bits at the pointy end, the wheels can be pushed right out to the corners, which improves stability, as well as increasing cabin space to such an extent that the interior of this 4.4 is virtually as big as that of a Fiesta sized Super Mini from the next class up. As a result, some have hailed this design as one of the most significant small runabouts we've seen since the original Mini. Move to the side and of course the changes over the little 4.2 are more obvious, primarily in the extension of that Tridian safety cell to accommodate the additional doors. The one at the front isn't as big as it would be on a 4.2, which ironically makes this the brand's bigger model, sometimes the easier one to use in tight, crowded car parks. Much else, though, is shared with the smaller car, the plastic door coverings that shrug off knocks and bumps, the super short front and rear overhangs, and a neat engine vent below the rear passenger side C-pillar that gives away the distinctive mechanical configuration. I can't be the only one, though, that thinks the combination of all these things is so much better balanced in this five-door body style. While a 4.2 remains curious and quirky, a 4.4 is simply neat and smart. You might even call it stylish if you were being charitable. There's certainly a bit of character in its side profile, with the roof line sloping downwards in coupe style, a neat crease line framed from the front indicator, defining the colour-coded door handles, and a flowing swage line in the lower door sections, helping to pinch the waist in a bit and giving the bodywork more of a toned look. Otherwise, the profile of this car continues to be characterised by the colour contrast between the body panels and these emphasised outlines of the Tridian safety cell that can be trimmed in white, silver or, as here, in black. These same three colours can be used for the front grille with its large, bold, three-dimensional smart logo. This panel honeycomb trim to match a second, narrower opening lower down. Both grille sections sit below a removable bonnet panel, under which, instead of an engine, you'll find the battery in various fluid reservoirs. Equally unusual are these rhombic headlights, though they look better in reality than they do on a printed or virtual page. Tick the box for the LED option and they pulsate when the car's unlocked. And on all 4.4s they incorporate U-shaped daytime running lights as a distinctive touch. In fact, almost everything about this car is distinctive and it can be more so once a careful choice has been made from body colour combinations that are so endless that the efforts at 
personalization from rival brands, which usually amount to a few different roof colours and some chintzy decals, seem rather pathetic. At the rear, you get a neat roof spoiler and more LED light theatre if you paid extra for it. That scenario delivering 11 individually illuminated LED cubes in each tail lamp to produce a distinctive nighttime signature. Sadly, 4.4 buyers do without the 4.2 model's innovative two-piece tailgate. There's just this conventional glass rear hatch with the optional reversing camera artfully buried within its three-dimensional brand logo. The tailgate stretches right down to bumper level and the area where the engine's housed. Ah oh yes, that engine. We keep coming back to that, don't we? It's been ingeniously mounted at a 49 degree angle that not only stops it intruding into the cargo area, but also means that in a rear end collision, the mechanicals will be pushed beneath the passenger cell. All well and good, but it's still right here, taking up boot space and making the cargo area floor higher than it would otherwise be. Hotter than it would otherwise be too. I'd transport my ice cream and frozen goods back from the supermarket in the front passenger footwell if I were you. You might need to do that anyway, for in standard configuration, you've only got 185 litres of space to play with here, about 25% less than is offered by many segment rivals, and even 35 litres less than you get in the little 4.2. Stay with me though, for from here on in, the news gets much better, thanks to a combination of clever design and the packaging freedom that the rear engine configuration allows. Let's start with this, the way that you can tilt the rear seat back to a more vertical cargo position. A simple action that increases your luggage capacity to 215 litres, provided that you can persuade rear seat folk to put up with a little extra discomfort. Where this 4.4 really shows its versatility though, is when you push forward the standard 50-50 split folding rear bench. It's not just that the 975 litre capacity this reveals is better than most other cars in this segment, it's also the sheer usability of that beautifully flat space, emphasised primarily by the fitment of an almost unique feature in this class of car, a fold flat front passenger seat. Thanks to this, Astonishingly long loads of up to 2.20 metres in length can be accommodated, say a full-size double base or an adult bike. Or, according to Smart, you could accommodate two of IKEA's 2.12 metre long billy shelves, as well as uh, a one metre high yucca plant and four small boxes. All this in a city car. I'll show you something else I really like too. A feature not included on this car's Renault Twingo design stablemate. It's these ready space rear seat bases. If you've a taller item to carry and it needs to be transported upright, say a tall plant or a piece of delicate electrical equipment, you can flip over these seat bases so that the seat squab sits lower to the floor. And if said item is wide and bulky, you can remove this centre storage compartment too. And once you've done that, a 42 inch package flat screen TV could be transported. No other car in this class can do all this. Time to take a seat up front where you'll find yourself sitting comfortably and commandingly in a position that further aids the way that the short stubby bonnet makes parking placement so straightforward. Your first thought might well be to wonder how on earth something so diminutively small outside can feel so large and airy within. That's down to the fact that though this car might be quite short, it's also deceptively wide, pretty much as wide in fact as its Fiesta Super Mini sized predecessor. As a result, you won't get the feeling delivered by so many city cars of being in some kind of cramped urban mobility pod. It's smartly fashionable in here too, the dashboard a two-piece affair with the upper part trimmed in a lovely mesh effect fabric coating that looks great, though I wouldn't want to have to try and get melted chocolate out of it. 
This can be colour coordinated alongside the central seat facings and the middle panels in the doors with orange, blue or as in this case black themes depending on the model you choose. Further funky touches include this neat optional pod that you can have sprouting out of the dash featuring a rev counter and an incorporated clock. Then there are these four spherical air vents with their friendly clickety mechanisms and this unusually configured air conditioning unit on which the desired temperature can be set on a central scale you select from with the aid of a sliding magnifying glass. Most eyes though will be drawn towards the centre console, particularly in a plush model like this one fitted with the brand's clever smart media system with its 7 inch touchscreen display and 3D navigation setup. Now from here, as well as controlling uh, sat-nav and the stereo, you've got the option to get uh, economy driving tips, use text-to-speak messaging and surf the internet to download a range of smart sourced apps for things like email, Facebook, Twitter news and fuel prices. It's really very clever indeed, though there is the issue that annoyingly, at least for me anyway, this setup forces you to do without a CD player. Personally, I'm not wedded to iTunes, but even if I was, I'd still want the option to play a disc or two. If you haven't paid the extra for the smart media system, then your 4.4 will instead come with the brand standard audio system, onto the front of which you can add a rather cumbersome smartphone cradle. Better designed is the optional universal smartphone holder that can link in your handset to the infotainment functionality you'll almost certainly want one of these attachments so that you can make full use of the smart cross-connect app that can be freely downloaded to play music, uh, provide navigation maps, uh, give you driving efficiency tips and guide you to parking spaces. Otherwise your main tools of operating functionality are housed in the semicircular binnacle that you view through the three-spoke leather trimmed multifunction steering wheel. The thin crescent shaped speedo dial included here is hardly a model of clarity but there can be no complaints about the 3.5 inch central information display within it that deals with fuel and trip computer functions as well as offering an eco score system to grade the efficiency of your driving. I should also mention the seats here trimmed in lovely optional stitched leather that looks great but heats up quickly in hot weather particularly if your car is fitted with the optional panoramic glass roof panels that I've got in this model. The seats are more supportive than I expected them to be and position you quite commandingly as I said earlier on and that's a welcome design feature in such a city based car. Like the steering wheel they adjust for height of course, or at least they do on most models. Rather meanly, Smart makes you pay extra for an adjustable steering wheel and adjustable seating on entry level variants. While I'm nitpicking, I'll also tell you that there isn't really anywhere to put your clutch foot. The glove box is tiny and awkwardly shaped and that female buyers will be irritated by the fact that the vanity mirror isn't illuminated although uh, it does include a useful parking ticket holder, part of a pretty comprehensive roster of oddment space provision. Now included in this you get door bins that can hold a decently sized one litre bottle, a neat drawer that slides out of the centre console and includes a cup holder, and an optional compartment for your glasses above the driver's side window. So front seat passengers are pretty well looked after. What are those in the rear? Well for a start there's only space for two, the pair of occupants separated by this plastic storage tray that includes a couple of cup holders. Some city cars, Fiat's Panda for example, offer the option of a proper bench with a middle third belt so three small children could be carried if necessary, but Smart doesn't. On the subject of your kids, well they might find it a bit annoying to find that here, as with some other models in this class, you don't get proper wind up windows, just these opening flaps. Having said all of that, there are important pluses to consider in terms of what's provided back here. For a start, access through the wide doors is very good, they open to as much as 85 degrees. Yes, I'd like to have seen a sliding rear bench for ultimate versatility, 
But those ready space seat bases that I mentioned earlier are some compensation for that. As is the fact that room for your knees and legs is actually quite good for this class of car. Provided you don't order the electric panoramic fabric folding sunroof, uh, headroom's pretty good too. Even with the optional panoramic glass panels that are fitted here uh, and give what would otherwise be quite a dark area a glassy, airy feel. This 4.4 sells at a premium of around £500 over its two-seater 4.2 model stablemate, which means a pricing span pitched mainly in the twelve to £15,000 bracket. Most buyers will be choosing between two main three-cylinder petrol engines, both shared with the 4.2, the obvious choice being the one I've been trying here, Smart Zone 71 brake horsepower 1 litre unit. As a buyer, though, I'd also want to look at the Pokia 90 brake horsepower turbocharged 0.9 litre power plant the brand has borrowed from Renault, available for a reasonable £600 premium over its feebler counterpart. Either way, there's the option of Twinamic automatic transmission for a premium of around £1,000. Other, more minority interest engine options developed for this car include an entry-level 60 brake horsepower unit, a diesel, an electric drive battery-only setup and a rare Brabus hot hatch version with an uprated version of that 90 brake horsepower power plant. On to the value proposition those prices represent in the expanding city car sector. Analysis that's complicated by the fact that when it comes to smart 4.4 ownership, you don't get the poverty spec entry level trim option that every other brand offers. As a 4.4 buyer, you have to have niceties like alloy wheels, climate control and cruise control. Things that rival city cars would make you stretch up to pricier mid or top spec variants for. Take, for example, this car's design stablemate, Renault's Twingo. It does come in stripped-out base spec form, hence a starting petrol model price tag of under £10,000. Insist, though, on a Twingo with a decent level of equipment and the engine stop and start system that all smart models get as standard, and the value perspective becomes rather different. On a 4.4, entry-level passion trim is roughly equivalent to mid-range dynamic trim on a Twingo. Make that comparison and the price difference between the two cars narrows to only a few hundred pounds. You'll need to bear the same thing in mind when making comparisons with other equivalent city cars in this segment. Cars like Fiat's Panda, Hyundai's i10, Vauxhall's Viva, Suzuki's Celerio, Kia's Bacanto, Mitsubishi's Mirage, plus those ubiquitous shared designs. The one we know as either the Volkswagen Up, the Skoda Citigo or the Seat Mi, or the one we know as either the Peugeot 108, the Citroen C1 or the Toyota Igo. Look at any of the models I've just mentioned in their cheapest one-litre five-door entry-level guises and you'll typically be faced with a starting price of anywhere between £8,000 and £10,000. As I've said, 4.4 pricing starts from just under £12,000. Sounds like a big difference, doesn't it? Until you level the playing field by equalising the spec of the car you're looking at against that of this smart. At that point, a 4.4 will start to look much better value. And bear in mind that here you get some features that can't be ordered on other city cars at any price, like the clever crosswind assist safety system. More of that later. I should also point out that Pokia city cars, able to compete with the faster 90 brake horsepower turbocharged version of this smart, tend to be better specified up front, so are priced more comparably. Indeed, two of them, the 75 brake horsepower version of Volkswagen's Up and the 98 brake horsepower 1.2 litre DIGS version of Nissan's Micra will actually cost you slightly more than an equivalent turbo 4.4. If, having considered all of this, you conclude that it is a 4.4 that you really want, then you're probably going to be pretty pleased with your choice when you come to consider the standard specification Smart is offering across the range. All 4.4 variants do, after all, come complete with automatic climate control, Bluetooth phone connectivity, cruise control with a speed limiter, a leather gear shift lever, 
a trip computer, uh, an outside temperature display, a lovely black or orange fabric covered dashboard and a leather trimmed multifunction steering wheel from which you can control the decent quality smart audio system with its USB and aux in connectivity. Outside, there are 15-inch alloy wheels, LED daytime running lights, a rear spoiler, and a color-coordinated look that's at odds with the stripped-out budget feel that's usually common to tiny cars in their cheapest guises. Plus, you get an alarm, electric windows, and hill start assist to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. Then there are the practical touches, too. Not only the split folding rear bench you have to pay extra for at entry level with some rivals, but also the ready space seats with the flippable seat bases and a fold flat front passenger seat. Both features that can transform the versatility of your car in a few seconds. True, it's a little irritating to have to find more money on base passion trimmed variants for power heated mirrors and height adjustment for the seats and the steering wheel. Still, you can get these features further up the range, or for not much more, as part of an optional comfort pack. Or they come included in the premium pack that's an £800 option with any of the given trim levels and includes rear parking sensors and a smart media system with sat-nav stereo and informational functions built into a neat 7-inch touchscreen. I'd certainly want the premium option if I was specifying this car. A pricier Premium Plus package further adds front fog lights, LED technology for the front and rear lamps, auto headlamps and wipers, ambient lighting, headlamps that briefly stay on after you leave the car at night to guide you to your front door, and a reverse parking camera. Mind you, if you need a reversing camera on a car this small, a visit to the opticians might be in order. To be honest, I think I could probably do without all of that, but on an entry-level model, I certainly would want to get the optional rev counter gauge with its incorporated clock and probably the smartphone cradle for my phone if I had the base stereo setup fitted, though that looks a bit clunky and rather obscures some of the radio's functions. Better designed is the optional universal smartphone holder that can link in your handset to the infotainment functionality. Niceties you'll find further up the range or on the options list include things like leather trim, heated seats, larger 16-inch alloy wheels, a twin panel panoramic roof, an electric fabric folding top and various colour coordinated trim packages. I might well be tempted by the optional 12-speaker JBL sound system with its 8-channel 320-watt DSP amplifier. And there's also a sports package that gives you a sports steering wheel, stainless steel pedals lowered suspension and a chrome tipped exhaust. Other nice to haves include a reversible boot floor mat, a luggage net to keep your shopping from scrambling itself on your way back from the supermarket and a rather neat cool bag that connects into the car's 12 volt socket and would be ideal for picnic expeditions out with other smart folk. And you'll be getting to know other smart folk quite well if you make full use of the clever little free-to-download smart cross-connect app that you'll really want to activate in ownership. The Connect app starts automatically when your smartphone is Bluetooth linked up to the car and evaluates your driving style to promote greater efficiency, while also enabling you to play your favourite tunes. Plus, most innovatively, it allows smart users to share information on local parking spaces, particularly those suitable only for the compact dimensions of this car. These will be displayed on your phone, uh, with the option of directions to the one you select. This, of course, assumes that smart users will want to share this information. Am I just being extraordinarily selfish, or is it more likely that 4-4 drivers will want to keep the location of valued parking spots to themselves? Yep, I thought so. Once you've got the spec of this car right, you'll probably want to personalise the look of it too. And as usual on smart products, that process starts with careful colour coordination of the distinctive Tridian safety cell. That's available like the honeycomb finished radiator grille in black, uh, white or cool silver finishes. Inside, most models will let you choose between either white and black or orange and black colour schemes for the dashboard, the seats and the door panels. With the plushes variant, there's a more garish blue and white option. 
On to safety. Now, you might be worried about the greater likelihood of skidding in slippery conditions with a rear-wheel drive car. Smart says this won't be an issue, thanks to the way that this 4.4's electronic stability control system has been configured. Nor will the rear-engine configuration be a problem if you get hit from behind, as the unit's 49-degree mounting position means that in such a situation it would be pushed beneath the passenger cell. Another clever 4.4 design touch lies in the use of polymer in the bonnet and in the front wings to provide better pedestrian protection. As for other safety stuff, well, there's plenty of it, as you might expect, in a vehicle from the Mercedes stable. In fact, it's hard to believe they've squeezed so much into just 350 centimetres of car. There are twin front and side airbags, plus a driver's knee bag, as well as a brake assist system to help in emergency stops advertised to following motorists by automatically activating hazard warning lights. 4-4 buyers also get electronic stability control, Isofix child seat attachment points, integrated anti-whiplash head restraints and a tyre pressure monitoring system. Perhaps the cleverest and most unexpected standard safety feature though is what the brand calls crosswind assist. Every car driver will be familiar with risky situations when surprised by strong gusts of wind while overtaking trucks or on bridges, a scenario especially scary in a car as small as this one. Crosswind Assist is able to defuse such dangerous situations by carrying out specific braking intervention when the vehicle threatens to drift off track. As a result, less counter-steering effort is required of the driver. The system is active from 50 miles an hour when driving straight ahead and in gentle bends. And you'll know it's working when the ESP indicator lights up in the instrument cluster in response to noticeable intervention. From mid-range spec, all models also get a lane-keeping assist feature that uses acoustic and visual warnings to stop dozy drivers from veering out of their lanes on the highway. The same alerts are also used as part of a forward collision warning system that tells you if you're getting too close to the car in front. You'll be expecting low running costs from your 4.4 and by and large they don't disappoint. The 71 brake horsepower 1 litre 4.4 model I'm trying here is capable of returning 67.3 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 97 grams per kilometre of CO2, which as you'd anticipate is pretty much the same as you get in the equivalent version of this car's Renault Twingo design stablemate, and only fractionally more than you'd record at the wheel of Smart's tiny 4.2. Unlike the Twingo, you don't have to pay extra for a stop and start system that cuts the engine when you don't need it, stuck in traffic or waiting at the lights. Go for the other mainstream 4.4 engine option, the 90 brake horsepower 0.9 litre turbo unit, and your fuel and CO2 figures will stay much the same. Expect 65.7 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 99 grams per kilometre of CO2. All these figures are extremely class competitive and whatever your engine choice, opting for the Twinamic automatic gearbox has virtually no impact on your running cost returns. To help owners get somewhere near to these readings on a regular basis, the Smart Cross Connect app has an efficiency feature that evaluates your driving and offers advice on how to switch to a more fuel efficient style. There's also an eco score system on the central dash display which is also replicated on the instrument binnacle readout that rates your driving on the basis of acceleration, anticipation and gear shifting, scoring you accordingly. And a graphical history screen that shows the efficiency readings of your recent journeys. It's like being back at school. What else? Well, if you really want low running costs, you'll need to be talking to your dealer about the battery powered electric drive variant. Otherwise, for the two petrol versions I've just been talking about, you'll most likely be looking at uh, insurance groupings ranging between two and three. As for residuals, well, they'll be strong by class standards. In fact, I'll go out on a limb and suggest that if you're considering this car against its Renault Twingo design stablemate and decide to pay a slight premium to own this Smart, then you'll more than get that money back at resale time. Slightly more disappointing is the fact that while Renault offers a four-year warranty on the Twingo, you only get three years with a 
Still, it is an unlimited mileage deal, and you also get Smart Move Assist, an included 12-month international roadside assistance package that can be renewed annually following a Smart Dealer service. There's also a Smart Service Care program that covers virtually all your maintenance needs from as little as £15 a month. Ticking the box for this seems a bit of a no-brainer to me, given that to be the same kind of money you could easily spend on having the thing valeted a couple of times. Here at last is a smart model that can really build on the success of the brand's little 4.2. This 4.4 takes all that's good about that little city runabout and adds the extra seating and versatility that many urban buyers will need. The previous version of this car compromised some of Smart's distinctive brand values in order to do this, primarily the clever rear-wheel drive layout. This one doesn't. Hence, it's more unique feel and an individual character you can further personalise to your heart's content. It's this specialness that'll give this car an important showroom advantage over its Renault Twingo design stablemate. After all, look at the mid-range spec most will want, and the premium for ownership of this more fashionable smart model isn't very great. And in summary, well, our conclusions here are much as they were with that Twingo. Yes, some other rivals might be cheaper, slightly more efficient, or a little better built. Uh, in buying any one of them, though, you'll miss out on the cleverness that you'll enjoy every day in ownership of this car. When marvelling at how easy it is to see out of, how simple it is to park and how tightly it can turn. An ordinary conventional city car can't function in this way, and after driving a 4.4, you might start to wonder why. Here, perhaps, you might think, is a more definitive take on fashionable city motoring. For four.